It's my great pleasure to introduce our last, well, as the British say, last but not least, uh, keynote speaker, Professor yeah. Rui Min Shen. Yeah. Thank you. We have known each other for many years now. Mm. Uh, Professor Shen has a background in computer science, and about 16 years ago or so, he started uh, e-learning. They developed their own courseware. In particular, they developed this kind of distant learning and the environment of distant learning, probably the main part of the talk you're going to give in a minute. But let me say a few words about that beforehand. You see, when we Western, and I have been there over the last 20 years, actually, many, many times in, Ch in China, and I have seen this explosion of growth and development in the developed part of China, namely Ch uh, in Shanghai, Pe Pe Beijing, and the, the large cities. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, <clears throat> for example, at the, the other main university, the Fudan University, they built a home for the foreign students. It's about, it could easily accom accommodate all the Zabrican students at once, They're about 10,000, 20, just for the foreign students. When I came to your lab the first time, I was taken with a huge car. They just wanted to show us, you know, <laughs> we are not, we are China, we have the kind of thing. And then the driver took us over to show us the new campus. And after a while, we asked the driver, actually, where, where is the campus? Is it still very far? And he looked at us in complete amazing and said, well, for the last half an hour, we have been driving through the campus. The campus is as big as Zabrück, <coughs> literally. These are sizes and developments, and you will see some of the things in distance learning. For example, not the first time, but when I came later, um, I visited uh, Rui Min, I may say, um, and there was this huge skyscraper all of a sudden. And I said, oh, well, that's a beautiful thing, all, that, all downtown in the middle of the city and so on. Oh, yes, it's for distance learning. We built that. <laughs> It just takes you aback. And to go to, to particularly to go to Shanghai, it's a kind of, even when you're used to Tokyo or New York and so on, it's an urban experience. And these intellectuals, the, the architecture there, the whole urban lifestyle, it just takes your breath away, including the beautiful restaurants we have been treated to. <laughs> okay. Okay. I <coughs> okay, thank you. I should say thank you for Professor Sigma and Dr. Ego for you inviting me to be here as a keynote speak. Although I think most of the participants for the conference already live for home. <laughs> I'm a professor in computer science, and uh, for the computer science person, we always think small is beautiful. Okay, small means efficient. So today my topic is I will give some things about uh, university online education in China. So actually we have two parts working my lab and in Chaotong University, we have to pass one in the lab. We focus on the emerging technologies and learning area. About uh, 16 years ago, we got the first funding from Intel. We set Intel uh, e-learning center in China. And about 12 years ago, it's very lucky that we got license from the central government. We set a test bed, a huge test bed, online education school. Now, there are about more than uh, 30,000 students online, so we can use uh, knowledge very quickly in the test bed and uh, get response very quickly. And today I also gave you some example. What we, my lab are doing now is more, more means, mobile, open, and real-time learning environment. So firstly, I will give some data about why in China, the regular universities, they should start online education degree for degree in China. Now there are a total about 70, <coughs> or 67 online colleges. These colleges belong to regular universities. And these universities are, we say, okay, the top university in China. And only last year, there are more than 900,000 students enrolled in these online education. Okay. So these are new things in the past 10 years, and this is a new challenge for the regular universities. The challenge means, how can we ensure the quality of education, and how can we keep reputation of online education on the same level as the universities? So this is a big challenge. And why the regular universities should start their online education for degree in the past 12 years? This is the background. I, I think this is the main background, okay? We can get data for 2002, the admission rate for the universities in China is only 
15 percent, okay, because of large populations. Now there are about at that year about <coughs> 20 million young guys. They amount to right age. They have no chance to go into universities. This is a total different compared with Germany. Okay, Germany every guys can go to universities. Okay, but in China, we should provide more and more chance for the students. So this is a total different for the background. Okay. So at this time, if the central government wants to increase the China higher education rate from about 14 percent to uh, 40 or 50 percent, like Germany and the West countries, according to the regular way, we should set about 400 universities. It's unreasonable. So this is the background. The central government want the top units in China, okay, they start online education, okay, use modern technologies for degree. So this is a totally different background with compared to Western countries. So this is also means there are some research area as a research oriented. We are some different compared with West countries. Okay. So the main fact is we focus on large scale learning. Okay, because so large population, large scale. So the large scale means, okay, how can we deliver the large scale uh, of the content to the largest people, and how we can do interactions within large scale people, and how can we control quality, okay, within large scale people. Yeah, so we can see the data. So every day to years, there are more than 20,000 students in each of this online college. Okay, yeah, so this is also, we are focused large scale. The second thing is, the rapid change in communication situation in China. Now definitely China is the largest internet user in the world, and very important is, is already the largest mobile users. And we can see data, okay. Now they have more than uh, 300 million smartphone users, and China, ranking the first in the world. Okay, so this thing is very different, okay. One thing is so large population, the knowledge is one thing, another years, okay. The communication situation change very quickly, okay. There are so large of smart users, smartphone users. So this is the two base when, when we are thinking about our research. We, we hope our research is useful for the country or for the customer or for my students, okay. Yeah, so these are the two basic ideas. So this picture shows, okay, although in Tibet, it's a highland, okay, Tibet, okay, the shippers so also can use mobile to learn some things, okay. This is very high, almost about four, uh, 4,000 meters higher, okay, yeah. So things seem very interesting, China is very complex and very interesting. So, now I tell something about the project, uh, what we're doing in the recent five years is more. So more means mobile, all means open, R means real time, and, and we set a new learning environment. So firstly, I, I should say, what's uh, my understanding for the learning technology or uh, e-learning areas? I'm also a normal teacher in the computer science department and also we do this kind of things for <laughs> over 15 years. I think no matter what happened, the content almost the first fact to influence your students. Now we can know <coughs> the young guys, they can touch rich medias almost every minute. If we just put the materials on website, we could not attract your students or your customers. So how can we create fresh content, free content to your students? is the most important things in the learning area, okay? Yeah. The second thing is, now more and more, many devices can be connected to the internet. So how can we set a pervasive delivery systems and do efficient real interactions is also the second level in e-learning technology. So the first is fresh content. The second is pervasive transmit systems and <coughs> efficient interactions. The third year, okay, how we come to the large scale teaching quality or learning quality. We think self uh, community is maybe the one way, okay, good way to control quality. 
so so the mobile mobile teaching on the mobile learning or as a mobile learning okay now in our college so every day we publish almost four gigabytes mobile content free content with two ios android and simbeam and for the mobile learning we think all this topic yes it's very important for you what's the user experience for the mobile learning so the user experience is the most things important things for mobile learning so <coughs> at user experience the first years clear you should let students see very clear about your content you know okay so clear is the first things you know there are many education document you display in the large scale uh, screens but if you want to display on the uh, small size okay you should use recording okay redesign so we have some patterns okay on coding the t educational documents to the small size screens the second year adaptive mobile video lecture transmissions okay yeah because three transmissions or four transmissions is some different compared with the traditional internet transmissions okay so if we want to let users to share the same content at real time, we should have some mechanisms to adapt to mobile video lecture transmissions. The third is the user interface. The user interface is also very important. Okay, we can see the demo here. This is the real demo. Okay, just wait a moment. So. So, for the small screens, the user interface is, yes, okay, there are two live streams. If you touch screen, you can see, if you want to see clearly of the document, okay, you just touch it. If you, touch, if you see who are the teachers, who is beautiful, okay, yeah, you can see clearly the teachers. And also, you can use real time question and answer systems. Okay, yeah. Thank you. And uh, that means you just use mobile. You can touch which you want to wear the document or the image of the lectures. Also, you can send your questions in real time and you can get answer as soon as possible. So this is the middle, the, I, I think the many sized learning cycle systems on mobile. So that means you can uh, maybe bring your knowledge in the pocket. Okay. So every day we publish about, every semester we publish about uh, 200, uh, 250 live courses. Okay. Every day we publish about four gigabytes, four gigabytes live content, okay, to the students or to customers. And also we put this kind of use in the real classes because we have to be a test bed. We use this kind of technology in the English class, the test bed of 1,000 students, and the computer science class about 500 students. And it seems if the students, most of the students are part-time, if it's in mobile technology, their performance show better, okay, compared to normal classes. And one interesting thing is, if you use mobile technology in the real classes, after class, the students are eager to go into the class forum Okay, they will publish a lot of posts on the traditional forums. That means the mobile technology may let them learn more activities. And all these technologies and uh, performance and some of the experience will publish on trans transaction on education and, and the BJET. <coughs> the second thing for mobile is mobile teaching, especially in China. Now we can think of this in the normal universities. Most of the professors, they do not like to teaching. Okay, because for their survival, they want to like hunting project or hunting money. So oh, they are also travel all over the world to lectures, okay. But I, I always talk to professor or the lectures is most important in teaching. So we should provide some tools for the famous professor, the mobile teaching. I think mobile teaching is also very important. That means, when we're talking about e-learning, yes, anywhere, anytime you can learn, 
but now we can say anywhere in the world you can teach. So we also found tools for the mobile teaching that anywhere you just use iPad, now you use iPad or your desktop, you can join our systems and the teaching. No matter you are in real classroom or you are at the airport, you are on the way. Okay, so <coughs> mobile teaching I think is also very interesting. So you these are kind of tools. We collect some uh, famous professors over the world at their time, at their convenience to have live lectures to China. So the second year is open. So open do not only mean open students, but also we should open to the teachers and any devices. So we have a peer-to-peer -peer systems. We send Wascast. In this conference, we also use Wascast to deliver live lectures, okay, to your mobile phone, yeah. So the kernel of the Wascast is the peer-to-peer -peer transmission live stream transitions. And we tested from 2009, 2009, and we, we, we used it in about more than 19 classes, and the response is very, very well. And in this kind of systems, we now can say it has three features. One is scalable. Scalable means we use only about 10 percent compared to traditional ways, boundaries, and the latency bounded. For the live stream, the latency bound is very important. So in our systems, we just only need four or five seconds, okay? And it is also SaaS-based kind, yeah. So user can use it very, very well. And I think the most important things in China we are doing is real time, okay? Real time. Because, you know, I'm also teaching the normal classrooms, just in these classrooms. And we also have a survey in 5,000 students. And the result is very interesting. Most of students, they prefer traditional way, okay? Although China is rapidly changed for the mobile phone, okay, large market, but they prefer to the traditional ways. If we can pro provide traditional teaching and learning, they prefer this, not web-based learning, okay? So this is a very interesting result. And we think of this, almost in the um, 10 years. So about six years ago, we think, why not we send an essential teaching model? The essential teaching model means, this is the traditional teaching model. We said it's a natural classroom, okay? Because most of people, they get knowledge from classrooms. And now, how can we set a natural classroom, okay? And then we will standard the, the classroom and they will populate it. So we got support from the Shanghai Telecom, a lot of money, and we set a natural classroom the model six years ago. Uh, in the natural classrooms, they are very interesting. You, you teach it like a normal way. We, we, this just means we can recognize the, the lectures, body language, okay? So some camera folks, the teachers, and also, you know, for instance, This is a laser pen, okay? So normally we just use a laser pen to indicate what happened, okay? But in natural classroom, if the lecturer wants to write some things, the laser pen changes the e pen, and you do not go ahead to the blackboard to write some things. And also, in the natural classrooms, you know, we have found some students may be sleep in the classrooms, okay? And here chair was shaked, okay? So there are many things, okay? We do a lot on the natural classrooms. And then we set this kind of classrooms and distribute Shanghai City. We set about 10 e-learning center, okay? So each learning center, we has about uh, many size, uh, medium size and large size uh, natural classrooms. And so then we can provide different service different choice to the student. He can select to go to the normal classrooms or natural classrooms to learn, or his online do mobile learning or his high-speed learning, okay? <coughs> so, when we finished this kind of framework, then 
we are setting some learning environment, okay? The first year is, how can we process large-scale student questions, okay? So we did this job almost 10 years, and uh, 10 years ago we set an answer machine. The answer machine means we use computer to process the questions. Now we can also process audio-based questions for, for demo. 当下很火爆的Internet,您一定很熟悉。您也许这是在千里之外,通过Internet,您也许这是在千里之外,通过Internet,您也许这是在千里之外,通过Internet,您也许这是在千里之外。但您知道,Internet是如何连接起来的吗
some bio signal, and we can detect what is the student's status, and we can send a message to student remote students as soon as possible to give some advice. Okay. So this is the we are the learning environment. The learning environment means we focus on the first is very realistic years. How can we process student questions? Okay. The second years, how can we get uh, give students individual maybe advice? Okay. Not individual students, but individual groups, because this large scale. The third years, okay. What's the student emotions when they are long, longly learning? Okay. So <coughs> these are three things we are setting for the learning environment. And at last, I will say some the structure at my side for the learning every work. Okay, we are doing the real applications, and we have the e-learning lab. And this lab is maybe long history compares it's not for the e-learning work. And we got money from Intel in the from 1995, continuous almost 10 years. Okay. <clears throat> uh, number 10 years, and we also have big sponsor, China Telecom, and we focus on emerging innovation te in learning technologies. And a very important years, we have a big test bed. Now there are more than 30,000 students uh, learning in the school, in online colleges. So we can use the technology very quickly to the real applications and get response very quickly. This is very important, very important. And uh, <coughs> we think in the future, education may be, will be a service to the society. So the universities should open, knowledge should, should open. If we think education will be a service to the society, we, uh, we think we should cooperate with telecom company because they provide high speed network, okay, to, to the home, okay, to the, to the mobile. So we are very lucky we co cooperate with Shanghai Telecom Channel in the past years, and we, we found it's very convenient to deliver our content. For instance, now our live lectures can provide to almost uh, two million ADS users in Shanghai, okay? And we process some questions from the Shanghai home users, as they use the computer uh, on some machine, and, and find that that is very interesting and very, very useful for us. And we also do many uh, cooperation in China. Okay, in four, 2004 we host MIT Open Courseware. In 2004 they just called Open Open Courseware. I, I I host this conference in my lab, and we also do some the UK and the United States. <coughs> okay. So so today is the close. Well, I'm, I'm maybe the last uh, keynote speak. I, I, I should say, oh, I should say again, okay, for Chinese culture, okay, it's such a diligent to have friends coming so far away, okay. This confuses the Chinese, <coughs> a big man in Chinese history. And I think, I hope everybody here, if you are interested in some of the new technology or you some to some experience on e-learning lives in China, you should contact us. Thank you and welcome to Jiaotong University. Thank you.